ladies and gentlemen, Torghast is upon us. One of the biggest features that are going to be present in the Shadowlands. We're going to be doing this from the start of the Shadowlands all the way to the end, so it needs to be good. And Blizzard have seen right to actually give us as, as early as possible so we could test it as much as we can. It has been hilarious fun. So for this... I'm going to introduce you to somebody whose footage you've been watching a lot. We did do an introduction on a different video that's actually going out tomorrow. But welcome, Mr. Finn. Hello. You all right? I, what was that? That was so sheepish. Hello? <laughs> Microphone on? Welcome, Mr. Finn. Uh, you've been a massive help. We've just finished, actually, as of recording this, every single quick look in a week. We looked at every single spec. Um, I'm wondering how you feel about... How much is involved with checking out all these classes for the first time you've taken part in such a thing? I need some sleep. Um, Same, dude. Yeah, no, it's, it's been fun, actually. I've, I've played a ton of stuff that I wouldn't normally, which is kind of good. And Alpha, it's my first time on Alpha, so... it's, oh, it's way less. Alpha. Yeah, it's way less Alpha-like than I thought it would be. Like, a lot of this stuff works. It's good. This is it's a different really Alpha. <laughs> to be fair, this has been a very different Alpha uh to a lot of them they've done a really good job this time and seemingly let's hope they keep it up uh with how they're performing here but we're here to talk about torghast of course uh first night we did it we made a three-man group on the night it came out and we went through everything and the way it's currently set up on the alpha apparently is not how it's going to be on live so we had two quest areas correct that went to like level mm -hmm. 12 i think finn something like that Just six six each Yep. Just six each, which kind of introduces you to the different layouts because the amazing thing about Torghast is it is a truly entirely randomized. This isn't randomized like islands are randomized, which is it's the same island uh, with just different enemies on it. And they seem to have done it very smartly. I don't know how you felt about it, Finn, is that the corridor systems, the way they looped around sometimes, we actually found out that some of them spawn into actual like donuts uh, and kept bringing you back and really rewarded exploration because you can get to the exits real quick. But you then want to go back. Yeah. Um, I listened to the interview that... I cannot remember his name. But did with Towley. Yeah. Um, Was it Ian? Or... Uh, I didn't see that no, one. No. Tom something, I think. But, oh, okay. Um, they were, they were talking specifically about Torghast. And they said that initially they were going to go for like the full random generated levels. But mm -hmm. it just put you in like boxes sometimes. So it didn't really work that well. So I think what they've done is they've built like layers that then sort of clip onto each other. Mm -hmm. And it, it does feel that way when you do... I've done like a full run now, not to spoil it coming ahead, <laughs> but like a, a lot of the levels have similar parts to them, but they're never exactly the same. So it's, it's like really they've cool. put together a lot of... Uh, almost like Ikea furniture. There's lots of pieces and it all sticks together in different ways to make sure it always works. Yeah, it's spot on. Yeah, that seems to be the idea. But some of the layouts, like visually... Um, going into yeah, some wrong. of them they're incredible like some of the best environments i've ever seen you think bastion's amazing then you go into torghast which you kind of i always you compare it to islands and visions you see it's kind of like i've seen this before you know it's and once you've seen three of them you've seen them all but every layer we went to like even just the background areas you start especially when you get to start at the base and it, um i mean emma called it hogwarts i didn't think it looked like hogwarts <laughs> uh but it looked like the actual it looked like doom Honestly, it looked exactly like Doom uh, while we were doing that. Yeah, it was really cool. And it, I think um, quite a lot of it as well. It's like a lot of the environment that looks like sort of skybox is not. Like, you can get to it if, well, this if you is... have a But, you... like, you can't get to a lot of it is playable, which is kind of cool as well. <laughs> yeah, we will get to the weird... Uh, I mean, we're talking about the layout now, but uh, one thing we found curious is there are the lots of areas literally only accessible by Demon Hunters, and it happens reasonably regularly. Uh, now you've played up to floor 72, which is the current ending of Torghast. Mm -hmm. I haven't had a chance to be making the videos today. Um, did that happen a lot? Where you less just... than less than when we were in the group. Uh huh. Um, but I I did have to like levitate myself onto other ledges and then just accept a death to get a couple of spells sometimes. Right. So um, should... No, that's a good call. We should probably go over exactly how Torghast works um, as well here. Is that it's not time based, which has been really no. cool. Yeah, your deaths essentially, you get a set number of deaths per floor, and once you run out of deaths, 
a massive monster spawns and chases you. <laughs> yeah, the, the Taragru uh, comes for you. And uh, until you can... I mean, we can spoil it. He is killable. Although it does say in the preview... <laughs> The Taragru cannot be defeated, which has been proven wrong several times now. I believe Limit had the world first kill because they were like, undefeatable, A. Eh? They went full Spartan on it. We'll put that name to the test. Uh, and they did manage to kill it. And then many people have killed it now, including yourself, uh, who yep. did kill it just before we recorded this. Um, but not being time-based is great because if you're planning to spend a long time there, like how many hours were you in there today? Three and a half, I think. Which and is, then that, I had bad. like an hour break. I went and had some lunch and... Uh, we, we had a, another chat earlier on. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there, there's like, you can just sort of wander away from your PC if you want to. I think um, they are looking to change that though. That's my understanding of it. Interesting. From In what way? Some of the notes and stuff is that they're they're trying to limit you from just on the hard floors, just waiting for blood lost every pool. You know. Yeah, I do so understand gonna, that. So they're going to try and not necessarily make it time based, but maybe make the jailer throw more ads at you if you're sitting around doing nothing yeah um, so it might not be a positive thing to sort of wait on cds all the time um which i had to do on my priest at points like i wouldn't have been able to get to 72 without sitting around for three or four minutes at a time yeah it's uh it's one of those things that people don't like to talk about when it comes to mythic plus is you know they hate being time-based the problem is when it doesn't have some level of restriction that opens up you to have everything all the time, which not, no dungeon is designed to in that way. Uh, that's obviously not how things are designed. So it is nice right now that we can, because we just went for a break, which I'm sure would probably be fine when we did our, we've done three and five man together, is after a, an hour or so, you're like, okay, let's go, let's just have a bathroom break. And you just fine to go and do that, come back, everybody ready? All right, we're going to push on uh, and get those things done. So I, th I found it a real positive, especially with really long content like this, because this is not visions but we should explain torghast is going to be a mandatory thing this is how you get your legendary craftable stuff uh right now they have this placeholder legendary item that you get each floor uh, i'm not sure finn maybe from the lengthy journey you did did you still continue to pick that up or did that kind of stop at a certain point i still continued to pick it up interesting that is interesting yeah. uh because the the way blizzard is approaching a lot of the shallan stuff is you should be very quickly, kind of like kind of like you're doing 8.3, is within a very short period of time, you should be able to collect the massive amounts, a huge percentage worth of player power stuff for that week, and then everything else you do is for something else, cosmetics or whatever. Uh, we are picking up freed souls, which is something to do with soul binds. We don't really know what it does, but we are picking those up inside Torghast. And it is designed to be endless, although right now, as Finn has pointed out, it does have an end. It ends at level 72, but this is the alpha test. So everything we're talking about right now it's probably stuff they're looking into. Let's talk about how fun this thing is. And it's going to be controversial to some, depending on how much you can do Torghast, is that a big theme of it is regularly there are enemies and vendors which allow you to upgrade your character to the levels of absurdity. And along the way, you modify the spells for your spec uh, to the point where we had some combos. Like I've been playing a lot of Demon Hunter in Torghast. I found it easily the most fun. It's currently limited. We can only play Demon Hunter, Priest, Warlock, and Mage. Uh, Demon Hunter had... Ultimately, by the end, I had I beam that reset every time I pressed it. I was immune to damage. And it also extended all the other abilities I had and increased the damage of those. So I basically became a laser turret by the end. I also had Fell Rush, which had no cooldown and did 400% damage on top of the other damage modifiers I had. Meaning that every time I fell rushed, it was just killing stuff. Um, you've been <laughs> now, it's not balanced, though. So you've been playing Priest. What kind of cool combos did you get? And maybe take us through how you developed along the, the hard run. Well, the, the hard run, I, I ended up with 164 additional powers, which is kind of oh, crazy. Um, yeah. That's quite a lot. Um, a lot of those are like things like stacking crit damage, stacking haste, mm -hmm. stacking crit chance, all that sort of stuff. But Priest has a few interesting ones. Um, the main one that does a lot of damage early is that your Mind Blast does 500% damage, but has a 400% increased cooldown. Mm -hmm. So for, for Disc, it makes it a one minute CD, but it hits for like 20,000, <laughs> which is pretty much what a mob has, like early levels. Yeah. Um, and the early levels are by far the hardest um once you get 
a couple of combos together and it's fairly simple late game. Um, yeah. The, the other really fun one that I had on Priest for the heroic run is Maw Rats. So Maw Rats are like essentially little rats that run about in the dungeon. They do a little bit of damage to you, but if you kill them, you can make them explode. Mm -hmm. And my exploding Maw Rats were doing about 500,000 damage at the end. Um, which just pops whole packs. So it's, it's and it pretty detonates ridiculous. everything. Yeah, so yeah. What, it, what issue they have, the, the whole point of the system is that you are enclosed in this heart of hell. And I did have some feedback on Twitter with people like, I hate this because I want my characters to play like this a lot. And that's kind of been the limitation Blizzard's had for a long time is that, yeah, every time we make a new piece of content, we kind of have to balance it. And with Torghast, they said, okay, let's go for a proper Diablo style thing. It's enclosed just inside here. And therefore, we can get real silly with it because it's only working inside there and it doesn't affect anywhere else in the game. And I think they do need to be really careful. I'd like to see your thoughts on this finish, how much they let us do this per week because otherwise people will run into the point of playing Torghast a lot and then they go out into the regular game and they feel just insanely weak. And that's not good. The people are going to be real annoyed by that. Yeah. I, I think there's there's a, a point in the dungeon run where you'll have like 30 to 40 percent haste you'll have some additional crit and like a couple of your spells will hit harder and that's kind of fun but once you get to the end it's so absurd you don't want to play a class like this it's just so <laughs> dumb like it, i think it falls off really fast i think i i was literally just shadow word painting stuff and running around yeah now if that's your thing then sure that like good luck but I, I don't think anyone who's really interested in how their class plays would want to play their class just pressing one button over and over. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think, yeah, there's maybe some diminishing returns on that. I think if you go in for the first like three or four levels, maybe five levels, you might feel like, oh, these buffs are stuff that I could actually use. Getting double talents is kind of fun. That is really fun, um, yeah. But other than that, it just gets so absurd so fast that I, I'm less convinced now than I was before that that'll be a problem. Well, that's a good to hear from... Uh, I want to try this, uh, hopefully, tomorrow sometime, is to spend a long time in there. Um, what seems to be... Uh, let's talk about the, the positives of this, then. Let's talk about the positives. One, the environments are amazing. Uh, the content mm -hmm. itself, getting the spell combos, you do start to think about builds and stuff. Obviously, if you're doing the full, full run, you're kind of going to get everything. But as you're working through the harder levels, where the mobs aren't getting one shot to death, uh, we ran into some massive almost huge walls when we were doing the heroic five man uh where we ended up fighting a boss that was extremely difficult for us but it kind of almost felt like we were reaching the breaking point where this wouldn't be a problem anymore uh but we yeah. did run into this huge wall that was good because it was super hard we had access to all these mega abilities and even then we had to play around them we actually had to use them and you do think about creating a build you're looking for certain hoping for certain powers certainly early game you're looking for like, I really want that. And I think for you on your Dispatch, it was like the Boon of Ascendance one. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. really hoping to get that because it's so, so powerful. Um, the negatives at the moment, which I don't see as big negatives, is one, the scaling is definitely whack. Uh, there is, like we talked about a breaking point before we started, and you said it was around level 55, yeah. where you just yeah, became God. Like yeah, you became yep. God mode. Like the, the concept made no sense anymore. You were just trashing the whole place. And of course, by the end of it, you killed the unkillable. Um they, now I trust Blizzard. They made this is the guy, this is the same company that makes Diablo. They they've got people who are used to like okay, let me show you this then, <laughs> right? Because this is the very first go they've had at Torghast. They're going to be like, all right, we can see how powerful you're getting. Well, watch this then, and I'm sure that's what they're probably working on now is whether or not people could get past heroic. And it has to be said here, and I think this is probably what you did, Finn. But I don't actually know the answer to this. So you can correct me if I'm wrong. Is heroic at the start? which won't seemingly will not be on the live version, but it starts at level 26, isn't it? Is that where we start? 25, 26? 24. 24. Mm -hmm. It's so hard because you go in with no yeah. abilities that we literally just re-rolled Torghast until we got a doable first level. It's nuts. I had to, um, I had to re-roll on my priest until I got a non-undead level mm -hmm. because mind control was like essential for me to kill packs with more than one thing. Yeah. Um, if, if there was two mobs, I couldn't. I would just die on repeat. So being able to mind control them was a must, and you can't mind control undead until you get the anima power that lets you do that. So, 
yeah, I had to reroll until I got a level that wasn't undead. Beyond that, it was just ridiculously hard. The first like two levels took me about two yeah. hours ish, something like that. Um, and then the last fifteen levels took me about ten minutes. Yeah, exactly. So it's I want to just want to be clear, maybe from the audience, is like, oh, people are already finishing already. Trust me, like to get the heroic run going, that's the hard part. Uh, with lots and lots of re-rolling because it is random what you're going to get uh, until you can find something that's remotely doable. Uh, in our five-man heroic, we rolled like seven times until we could get past the first pack. That's how hard it was. Uh, we had to keep re-rolling because the first packs were just annihilating our entire party. Of good players, there was nothing we could do though. These things were just crushing the party. Um, so although it is, and people we are doing this. this yeah, we yeah. probably can't just re-roll when it goes live, <laughs> right? We can't just re-roll yeah, when it yeah. goes live, and you're going to have to deal with what you get, or maybe, we don't know how Blizzard's going to work it, but don't be reading too much into people being able to do too, go too far. Uh, and I'm sure Blizzard mm -hmm. is fully capable of going, all right, now we can go a little crazier with the last part of this, or the higher levels, because obviously this is how powerful players are going to be. We wanted to see if they could do it, which is usually what the alpha is. Uh, now we get some get some idea they probably didn't expect people to actually finish it uh obviously they they sometimes underestimate the determination of wild players uh, to to re-roll and sit there for hours until they get the right start and then they're off uh to get these things done so i do think the next iteration of this is probably to make it considerably harder as you go higher up and they could probably start throwing some really wacky stuff at players seeing how powerful you get yeah i think if you if the live version is that you start from one and you go all the way up there needs to be less anima powers per level, for sure. Do you because think the you, solution you is to get... tone down players, not increase what you're doing inside? I I think so. Yeah. But, I mean, going into... The first couple of levels are, like, genuinely difficult. You have to think about CC. You have to think about interrupting stuff. You have to think about what you pull, what you don't pull. If you chain pull stuff, you're definitely going to die. Like, that feels really good. Once you start to get four or five anima powers a level you just start squishing stuff into the ground and it feels less good. Okay. I think it might be an anima power problem rather than a scaling issue. My question um, would be, uh, I don't know how you feel about this, Finn, is that if on live there is no normal, because uh, let me explain this, on alpha we have normal, easy, normal, and heroic. Easy starts at the bottom, but it finishes around level floor 12. And then you can do her normal mode, which starts at floor 12 and goes to floor... You know, I don't know, like 17 or something or something like that. Uh, and then you have Heroic, which starts at 24. And we do think that on live, this that won't exist. It will just start at floor one each time you start, which means right now when you go into Heroic, you start with zero anima powers. That's why these first two levels are so obscenely hard. However, if you do from zero, <laughs> uh, if you start from floor one, by the time you reach level 24... You're already going to be absolutely incredibly powerful, uh, which means that potentially this thing gets way, way too. If it stayed as it is, be way too easy. Probably past level twelve, I would think, something like that, because that's when you've collected. That's when I started to feel extraordinarily powerful. But that's when the run also ended for those difficulties. Yeah, definitely. So I'll be interested to see what they do with that. Let's talk about the uh, class balance, though, because this is something that I know you wanted to bring up when we had a pre-chat. Mm -hmm. Uh, is it definitely seems very skewed. There is a reason right now everybody with Alpha on Twitch is playing Vengeance in there. I think Slooty is doing some others. You did it on a Dis Priest. Do you want to talk to us about that rather than jumping into why Vengeance is being used? Uh, yeah, Disc is nuts. To be honest. <laughs> um, <laughs> in summary, yeah. Disc is nuts. Yeah, mind control is crazy. Um, especially, there's a, there's a trait that lets your mind controlled guy do 50% more damage. So if you run the talent that just makes him like a pet, mm -hmm. you're basically 2v1-ing packs that would be 2v1-ing you, and it makes the first couple of levels really easy. Um, well, not really easy, obviously, but substantially easier than they would have been. Yeah. Um, so I think that's fine. Once you get to the sort of combos where you start one-shotting stuff around level sort of 35 to 40, you start one-shotting things and things start one-shotting you. So it's literally about like not overpooling. Um, disc actually seems really good because you can take an additional hit because you're sort of healing yourself up constantly. Mm -hmm. um, I think I would have really struggled through the first few levels playing a pure DPS. 
just because you you struggle with healing. I tried a little bit on my warlock, and it was an absolute no go. Oh, um, really? Versus the disc priest, which is so much better. So warlock was literally a no go. We are talking about heroic, of course, which is as we just said, starting in a very hard position. Uh, yeah. but warlock no go, uh, major no go. We saw Scripe trying to do some stuff, but it's taking like a couple of hours per floor, almost it seemed. Yeah, I think there's a lot of downtime for mage. <laughs> you can kill like one mob at a time. You have to drink in between all of them. It's mm -hmm. really, it, I think you could do it. It would be really slow. Um, warlock is just a no. Your pets just die to everything um, because your HP isn't skilled. So well, that's a bummer. It's, yeah, it's a bit rubbish. Oh, and also, this comes down to the animal powers. So I've played a bit of mage in Torghast, and this is uh, one thing I will say. It's about Torghast. This is going to be the content that a lot of people will level alts to do. Like, they will want to, uh, you know, similar to the Mage Towers. Like, mm -hmm. I leveled my alts to do the Mage Tower. People are going to want to level alts just to piss about with them in Torghast. It's as simple as that. Uh, but depending on which character and class you play, the fun side of the abilities is in, in place fully yet, which is probably why they've limited the characters already uh, that could do this. But I know on my Mage, nearly every ability I got was way, way more boring than what I got on Demon Hunter. Uh, I got a lot of stuff with time warp, spell cooldown reduction, you know, stuff like that. Uh, blink spawning extra mirror images, which is fun. I also got mirror images itself, gives extra mirror, mirror images. So I ended up with like five and then six mirror images. But overall, it was like, compared to the stupid, stupid stuff I got on Demon Hunter, which is like you could cross entire football fields, as we saw Just Wait doing, it yeah. doesn't seem... Like, they quite have it, and or whether they're holding back on some classes for some reason. Um, what kind of stuff did you pick up on your Warlock uh, when you tried it out? So I, I picked up a, a purple one. First first orb that I found gave me, like, a, a purple rare uh, drop, and it was meant to give my demons 100% health and 100% damage every floor I went up, as mm -hmm. long as the demon didn't die. Because if the demon dies, it reset. So in theory, you should have this absolutely beefy Felguard, like 30 levels in, that is doing 3,000% more damage and 3,000% more HP. Yeah. But but he just died every pack on the first floor. <laughs> so I, I could never get it to stack properly. Um, so yeah, that one's definitely one that needs... like I think it's just pet damage. If pet damage is fixed, that one will be crazy. Because your Felguard will just do the whole dungeon for you. Is um, there any fun was, abilities that I'm looking for? Like, was there anything no. that, like Triple Havoc? Or, you know, you spawn twice as many imps every time you cast Hand of Gul'dan? You know, things like that. No, there's lots of, like, Implosion Radius is bigger. Um, there's lots of Curses ones, which, you know how I feel about Curses. But... What, what do they do? Like, Curse of Rex spreads or something? What? Um, <laughs> For every enemy you have a curse on within 40 yards, you gain haste, that sort of stuff. Oh, okay. Um, which is annoying because you don't really want to pull many things. Mm -hmm. So you're only really going to get two, probably, for the first few levels. And then by the time you start pulling multiple stuff, you're like one shot in it anyway. So uh -huh. a, a, f a few interactions feel a bit weird. What I will say is that from all of the anima powers, even the priest ones, percentage crit damage is the best. Oh yeah, that thing's obscene. Just the flat one. Like, yep. the, I don't, I don't think, I don't think that can be ten percent. I know they'll do tons of adjustments on off this, but like, if that sort of stuff stays as it is, I think my priest was running two hundred and seventy percent crit damage towards the end. Uh, no, um, we did see the results of that. <laughs> yeah, I crit nine million with a shadow word pain, but <laughs> I think there's like that sort of stuff is always going to be better than getting ten percent haste from putting a curse on something. So. I think they run the risk of making it you would always choose the generic stat increase versus the fun class increase. Yeah, it'd be something so if it scaled less, it that would be fine. If it scaled a little less, that would be fine. But it, it became apparent to me on the Demon Hunter is there were definite combos I wanted. Uh, though, you know, getting a permanent immolation order, for example. That was one I wanted, mm -hmm. the I-beam stuff. But then I was like, people like, why would you choose 5% mastery? And I'm like, bro, I've, I've got like 12 of these now. Like, my mastery is enormous. My run speed is huge. It's benefiting me in other ways. And I'm doing the same with verse. I'm doing the same with, you know, agility. And this is all adding up on top of crit damage. And uh, I think I ended up with ne nearly 100% crit on our run with massive crit damage bonus. 
you just that's it makes so much more sense statistically than looking to pick up say uh some of the more scam ones like you're invulnerable to damage which runs its course very quickly in use right it's just yeah. not that useful anymore uh yeah. and that's what you need because that's going to continuously go throughout the entire run so you're probably right there if they scale those back a bit so it's like one percent or you know yeah. one or two percent something like that there is a couple of really fun ones the the mage one that you have to press abilities in a certain order that's pretty cool yep quite enjoyed that one um there is a priest equivalent where um you you have to cast your holy word spells and for every one you cast you get a percentage of int bonus mm -hmm. now originally i was just like oh shadow word pain power word shield that sort of stuff as as disc and then i realized you can swap specs and cast all the holy holy words as well <laughs> oh no and all the shadow ones so <laughs> you go through all three specs you can have 10 words active so i had <laughs> I think base intellect just now on uh, alpha is something like sort of five six hundred. I think I had four and a half thousand <laughs> by the end of the run. Had so like that sort of stuff. Yeah, that sort of stuff just scales like crazy. But there there is some thought behind it because I never would have thought to switch spec mm -hmm. to to do that stuff. Well, I'm um, really surprised I, they let you let you switch spec. It feels like you sh that's a bug. I don't think they want you to do that because we had people switching between tank and havoc while we were doing it for certain things. It does feel yeah. like they, that you shouldn't really be allowed to do that if you because uh, what you could tell obviously is Finn did finish Torghast as a healer, so doing it as a healer is fine uh, depending on the healer. We can't try the other ones just yet. Um, yeah. And tanks are obviously doing well; they were the first to actually clear the heroic version, at least how Torghast works now. I expect uh, as we kind of wrap up here, one this is crazy fun. But what changes do you expect to see? I ex I think they're going to go making it harder by putting bigger, tougher enemies. I think they'll go the Diablo route. Is Yeah, sure, you're doing 9 million damage of Shadow of Pain. But this thing now has a gazillion health and actually does really scary stuff as you get further in. You know, But you'll, there'll still be a ton of trash mobs to kill. But they'll uh, put in some very terrifying mobs in there. Just so yeah, you can see I that number in action. So you can see that 9 million ticking, you know? Because that's the fun part yeah. is when you see those numbers. It just straight one shot the last boss but yeah i think like the, yeah they need to tone down the scale in a little bit i think i would expect to see some class changes um especially for melee in particular i think the one thing that i've not mentioned about healer is that it doesn't have an interrupt mm. and that it's kind of hard to play around whereas melee a lot of melee classes have a stun and an interrupt and can keep things locked down which is kind of hard the first few levels. So I'd expect to see some stuff around that. And then also, I know that they're only placeholder things for legendaries and resources and stuff, but I'd like to see that front loaded so that you get a lot more in the first few levels and it tails off towards the end. So yeah, you could push to 72 or whoever, mm -hmm. but you, you gain most of your rewards at the start because having to do a three hour run every week would be would be kind of hard. Not yeah, that I. should be like similar to the um, the proving grounds. It's ch it's optional, and I think if they will go that way, it's like you can keep going absolutely, and because this is supposed to be endless, from what I'm told and for what we understand, is it only stops at 72 right now because it's the alpha test, but it should continue to go up and up and up and up and up. And mm. if they want to do that and avoid somebody literally trying to spend many days inside Torghast, you know, uh, camping out in there and bringing his little his chips and his uh, his diet coke for his journey. Uh, then they probably need to start scaling up the mobs as well to make it make sense. Or even be able to scale directly in terms of what you're doing, in terms of what extra enemies they get in there. It would be also nice if they started putting some raid bosses in there. You know, like on certain floors, there's, you know, you actually bump into old raid bosses that do stuff and have their own little mechanics. I mean, the, the, this is what I love about Torghast, Finn, is there's no end to the possibilities of stuff they can do in here. Because it's a completely yeah. enclosed environment. There's not many bosses that have proper mechanics. There's a couple when you get towards the end. Um, one of them eats your anima powers, which is kind of fun. <laughs> so you get weaker as the fight goes on. Um, so that sort of stuff's really cool. But yeah, the, the boss rooms like aren't limited at all. You can make them do whatever you want, which mm -hmm. is kind of fun. I'm, I'm looking forward to see what other stuff they bring out. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I'm also really looking forward to playing some other classes in here. Oh god, I can't wait to get my warrior in there so badly. Yeah. So, so badly. Well, thank you, Mr. Finn. That is our more in-depth look at Torghast as it stands right now. But I will tell you, I think both of us agree this is a fun place. And we're looking forward to the next iteration 
of whatever they do. But done on a disc priest, done on everything. I think I'm not sure if a havoc demon hunter has done it. I haven't seen a mage do it. Uh, managed to get past anything, but we'll watch this space on that. Uh, would you like to say goodbye, Finn? Uh, yeah, bye. Bye, bye everyone. Bye, bye, everyone. <laughs> See you later, guys. <laughs> uh.